Ah, Kiev, you've been dreaming of getting here for years. Getting out your trusty camera, you start taking pictures of the cathedrals, aviation museum, and the Dnipro River, when without warning, there's an enormous boom behind you. Turning around, you see something towering in the distance. It looks like a gigantic explosion. Uh Uh-oh, time to leave fast! In June 2020, what the people of Kiev were looking at was an anvil cloud, a rare storm formation in the sky. Forming when strong air currents carry water vapor upwards, the air expands and spreads out as it hits the bottom of the stratosphere. It pushes the dense cloud into the cool anvil shape you see, and sometimes it even gets to be a mushroom. Anvil clouds produce some of the most dangerous lightning of all storms, one that's called a bolt out of the blue. This lightning strike seems to magically come out of the blue sky with the storm being many miles away. This type of bolt comes from the top of the anvil and can be 10 times more powerful than a typical lightning strike. People got so frightened after witnessing a giant cloud just 60 miles away, thinking something terrible must have happened. The locals had pictures of the large billow on social media before officials could explain what was going on. Authorities managed to calm everyone's fears by informing them it was nothing more than a natural phenomenon, and a beautiful one at that. Before dissipating, these clouds typically stay in one area, regardless of how strong the wind is. Touring around the northern tip of Queensland, Australia, way away from those creepy crawlies, it's time to take a break and relax at the beach. Getting comfortable, you notice a great big shadow passes over you, then another, and yet another. Looking up, this weird weather is simply stunning. The clouds are called morning glory, a very rare type of cloud that almost seems to roll across the sky, looking like a massive tube. These clouds can measure up to 600 miles long, even appearing in large groups as well. This phenomenon is the result of an updraft pushing through the cloud, creating a rolling appearance, while moist cooler air at the back causes them to sink downward. Southern India between July and September 2001. People witnessed one of the strangest weather phenomenon in recorded history. The rain was red. What many would have thought to be a typical rainstorm left them shocked. The color was bright enough to stain clothes. There were other colors too, such as green, yellow, brown, and even black. In the middle of a monsoon, red rain started to fall and did so periodically for several weeks. Researchers have found this unusual rain is stained either by dust or algae, so don't try to catch any on your tongue. Scientists aren't entirely sure how the algae got all the way up there. This does make events like this a little unsettling. Like to take a bubble bath to relax after an exhausting day, but taking too long to fill the bathtub? Problem solved! Head to any coastline after a big storm and take a dip. Foamy tides aren't native to any one place or location. They can be formed anywhere in the world. They're most likely to happen along rocky coastlines, like the coast of San Francisco, Northern Ireland, or the Mooloolaba, Australia. Each coast has differing conditions forming the sea foams. If you scoop up seawater into a glass and look at it closely, you'll see it's full of tiny particles. Many things like plants, chemicals, and lots of salt and minerals create the perfect formula for foam. When powerful currents and wind mix it all together, we get something that resembles a cappuccino top floating on top of the water. When freezing temperatures hit orchards in Michigan, all kinds of unusual things happen like ghost apples. No, they're not going to scare you at all. But if you plan on sneaking away one winter to find one, be warned. Everything has to be perfect for this to occur, and it's going to be freezing cold. This is actually a rare weather phenomenon caused by having the apples freeze where they are with rain coating the fruit in a thin layer of ice. The apples then thaw and leak out like applesauce, leaving just the beautiful ice shell behind. 
The Catatumbo River in Venezuela might be the most electric place in the world, with nearly 300 storm days per year. The lightning storms are so consistent, they're predicted for three months in advance. During the wet season in October, you might see 30 lightning flashes in a single minute, a truly shocking experience. With each bolt having the energy to power a single light bulb for six months, the impressive display could power all of Venezuela forever. At sunset, strong winds flow around the three surrounding mountains, forming storm clouds over the water. As the water droplets of humid air collide with ice crystals from the cold air, it produces the static charges that cause the lightning storms nearly every night. If that wasn't bad enough, some storms have lightning above them as well. Try to take a picture of this one. Jellyfish lightning sprites are electrical discharges high in Earth's atmosphere. They're associated with powerful thunderstorms, but they have nothing to do with rain. These sprites occur 30 to 50 miles up in the sky, in the mesosphere. Artificial lights at night make it a lot harder to see this faint lightning. If you spot one, it'll look tiny, but can be well over 30 miles wide. The red sprites are a type of cold plasma discharge above a thundercloud. They're the balance of the lightning charges between the storm clouds and the ground below. This region between Florida and the Bahamas is a famous place for studying various marine life. However, there's a mysterious phenomenon that happens here each year, the reasons for which scientists have yet to figure out. At times, people can see these white clouds appearing on the surface of the water. In technical terms, this occurrence is called a whiting event. With the information they have so far, scientists believe that the white patches may contain particles that are rich in carbon. The Bahama Islands do sit on a big platform of carbon, which stays hidden under the water. Another suggested theory for these unusual clouds is that maybe they're caused by blooms of tiny plants in the water. Scientists have even tried to use pictures taken from above by NASA to at least try to understand the movement of these water vapors. They've figured out that the size of the white patches seems to change with the seasons, with the biggest patches happening from March to May and October to December. The average size of a white patch is about 0.9 square miles. On a clear day, satellite pictures show about 24 patches. Other studies show that these events happen more often in places with considerable amounts of sediments at the bottom of the ocean. It's also possible that some ocean conditions make dirt and minerals float in the water. However, from 2011 to 2015, the patches in the ocean suddenly became almost four times larger. But by 2019, they had shrunk back down. It made scientists believe that there might be a 10-year cycle of sorts happening here, but they're not sure what causes it. They've also noticed a connection between the ocean's pH, salinity, winds, and currents. But for now, the data doesn't make a lot of sense. It's not the only secret Earth's oceans keep from us. Have you ever wondered about the deepest part of the ocean? It's known as the Mariana Trench, and it's believed to be around 6.8 miles deep, making it five times deeper than the Grand Canyon. The trench was first studied in 1875 with the help of a weighted rope. And in 2012, a Canadian film director reached its bottom using the Deep Sea Challenger submersible vessel. The Mariana Trench is home to some of the most bizarre creatures on the planet, like the Dumbo octopus, sea cucumber, and goblin shark. The trench takes its name from the nearby Mariana Islands, named in honor of Spanish Queen Mariana of Austria. It may be the deepest part of the ocean these days, but there's a lot we still don't know about the depths of our planet's waters. One such intriguing phenomenon is called phantom bottoms. In the 1940s, when sonar became standard equipment, ships and submarines started to detect unexpected signals from areas where no movement should technically exist. It turned out that these signals were coming from a layer consisting of jellyfish, shrimp, and other deep sea creatures. They rise to the surface at night to feed. Interestingly, 
These creatures move in a calculated manner, grouping together by species. It's still a mystery to scientists how they managed to do that and why. It was once believed that animals only grouped this way to avoid predators, but the reasons behind the formation of these fake seabeds remain unknown. Recently, the scientific community has acknowledged the existence of a fifth ocean called the Southern Ocean. This ocean is bordered by three of the four original oceans and encircles Antarctica and the lower hemisphere, with its borders touching Australia, Southern Africa, and South America. It's a unique ocean, attracting attention and sparking curiosity with its secrets and the creatures it might hold. Rumors of a monstrous creature in these waters have been circulating for some time, and recent research has provided video evidence of strange blob-like fish. The creatures were identified as the sea cucumber with the nickname the headless chicken monster. Although this species has been known since the late 1800s, there's very little information about it, including its count, behavior, and reproductive habits. There are also areas in the world where the ocean literally sparkles. It's not because of the water per se, but because of numerous creatures that have the ability to emit light, known as bioluminescence. This is pretty common among aquatic creatures, with three quarters of all underwater life being capable of this. Bioluminescence can be found anywhere, from the surface to deep within the sea, even as deep as 2.5 miles. These creatures use light for various purposes. For example, for communicating with their own species, attracting prey, or scaring predators away. The science behind bioluminescence involves the use of three chemicals, luciferin, luciferase, and oxygen. This process was first discovered by a French biologist named Raphael Dubois in 1887. If you want to know the difference between real bioluminescence and artificially created light, look for neon blue, green, or red sparkles spread over a large area in the ocean. This can create a captivating and magical effect, much like glitter or stars in the sky. And it's often because of squid, small crustaceans, and algae found in shallow waters. Have you ever heard a strange noise in the middle of the night? Now imagine that, but in the middle of the ocean. There are a few bizarre sounds that have been heard and recorded, like the bloop and Julia. Most experts think they come from big things, like icebergs scraping the ocean floor. But what if that's not the answer? In 1997, scientists were listening to underwater volcano noises in the Pacific using underwater microphones called hydrophones. One day, they heard a very loud and strange sound that was different from anything they had heard before. They called the sound the bloop. They couldn't figure out what was making this sound and thought it could be coming from a secret underwater mission, ship engines, whales, or an unknown sea creature. Years went by, and researchers continued to try and find the source of the bloop by putting hydrophones closer to Antarctica. In 2005, they finally discovered that the bloop was caused by icebergs breaking off glaciers and falling into the ocean. This phenomenon is called an ice quake. With Earth's overall temperature rising each year, ice quakes are happening more often, causing glaciers to crack and melt into the ocean. Then, on March 1, 1999, a loud noise was again heard underwater in the Pacific. The U.S. National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration thought it was probably an iceberg breaking, too. But the sound was different. This led some people to think the noise came from a sea monster named Julia. Some thought it was a new unknown species, while others believed it was a known creature, like a whale or a giant squid. Some even thought it could be a prehistoric animal. To this day, there's no proof that any of these theories are true. Then there's a story of an island that was swallowed whole by the ocean. It was called Bermeja, and it was a tiny and uninhabited island located at the northwest of the Yucatan Peninsula. Just a century ago, it was known to be located in the Gulf of Mexico, but now it's vanished, leaving everyone puzzled. In the past, 
Bermeja was frequently depicted on maps created by Spanish explorers during the 16th and 17th centuries. Although its location and name varied slightly, no one ever doubted it existed. However, starting from the 18th century, the island's presence on maps started to fade until it finally disappeared completely. So, what could have happened to it? Three official investigations were conducted in 2009 with the help of the most advanced technology. But Bermeja remained a mystery. Could it be possible that the island never existed and was simply a fabrication created by early explorers to deceive their rivals? Some people believe that countries made maps with inaccuracies to prevent their enemies from using them. Bermeja could have been one of such fake islands. Other scientists disagree. They claim that there are documents with precise descriptions of Bermeja's existence. They firmly believe the island did exist, but in a different location. Here's a way to read the weather. This unique cloud sometimes looks like a tornado, and sometimes it comes in wispy, finger-like shapes. In the second version, it forms at heights so low that it nearly touches the ground. If you see these formations in the sky, there's a chance that severe weather is close. These are called scud clouds, and seeing them means that you may soon face rain, hail, strong winds, or lightning. Scud clouds themselves pose no threat and are merely a signal of upcoming bad weather. Want to know how these mesmerizing monsters come to life? Well, it's all about humidity, my friend. When rain is lurking around, warm and moist air gets pulled up into the sky. This is like the fuel for a rainstorm. As this air rises, it cools down to match the chilly temperatures in the upper atmosphere. The moisture, however, doesn't go anywhere and sticks around, leading to cloud formation through condensation. Now, sometimes, the air doesn't wait until it reaches higher levels of the atmosphere to condense, so it becomes saturated just above the ground, and the condensation process begins even below the height of other clouds. As the air rises higher, it creates those cool, vertically-oriented scud clouds. All right, let me introduce you to this little ice sculpture-looking creature. The Phronima is actually a parasite. This little thing has found a way to create its own mobile nursery for its offspring by taking over another sea creature, the salp. Now, salps are these barrel-shaped gelatinous blobs that drift around the ocean, minding their own business. But Phronima's like, hey, I could use one of those as my ride. With its impressive front claws, a Phronima carves out the insides of a salp to turn it into an empty barrel structure, climbs inside, and sails the seas. Studies have shown that the hollowed out salp barrels still contain live cells, which help maintain the structure of the barrel and provide a sturdy home for the Phronima. If you think this creature looks familiar, the movie Alien was inspired by it. Next up, we have blue dragons. These are stunning creatures that live in the water. They are like living works of art, except this art can also sting you and cause some serious discomfort. The blue glaucus, yep, they are also known by this name, is a type of mollusk, or sea slug, only about one inch long. It floats around on its back, looking all fancy with its brightly colored underbelly exposed to airborne predators. But don't be fooled by its dapper appearance because this little thing is venomous. So if you're ever lucky enough to see a blue glaucus in the wild, be sure to admire it from a safe distance. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.